How's it going? Awesome. What have we got? Coach, lineman misses a block. Defensive player misses a tackle. Back drops, fumbles the ball. Receiver yeah. drops the ball. Nobody's yelling for the backup. Quarterback turns it over once and you lose. Yeah. Everybody's screaming for that guy. Is that just the nature of the beast? Yeah, no doubt. And I think, you know, these guys... My approach always is just going to check in with them, you know, and, and you all right? You good there? Yeah, you know, I just got to do this or that. Making sure they have an answer for their fundamental breakdown on whatever the play was. Um, but, you know, the guys that are doing it are the guys we trust, you know, and um, so for us it's just about, you know, go to the next play and trying to have that mentality. Dave, I thought you had your first drive for a touchdown. Oh, me too. I was trying not to think about it in the moment too. I was like, here it goes for the guys right here, or for the people, sorry. First thing goal, though, to start a game. Yeah. Um, we talked about red zone. And, and, and you go with the sneak there. I mean, yeah. and then you get hurt. But what, just, man, just how deflating can that be? Uh, yeah. What, what, what didn't go right down there? Yeah, I, tr I try not to make a judgment on the game on those scenarios, you know, and just try to say, okay, that was one situation. We came away with points, you know, and our biggest thing is get points, however many, however you can in those situations. But, you know, just again, just being on the half yard line, first of all, on the one yard line, Mike makes a great catch on the play. Um, and we're in our, you know, we're in our tempo there. You know, we have a play that we love. Um, and I thought, you know, that Gus did a great job of subbing in that situation. He doesn't care if he gets the offsides to get the right people, you know, and um, they wanted to go big in that situation. And, um, you know, I understand, like, we've run the ball pretty well inside the five for some touchdowns recently. So, um, you know, we got it extra half yard and once we're there I'm just like we got to be able to get this you know on the sneak and I can't I don't have a crystal ball I don't know that's going to happen to Baker on that play and um in the back of my mind I'm just like not on a sneak you know I'm like hoping he's all right you know just like you know on that play but um yeah then just finishing you know the 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 false start right there I thought it was a really smooth I thought it was a really smooth indicator by Stinney on a normal silent cadence that we did and so I didn't I didn't see the call but Obviously, the officials are dialed in. They're looking for those types of things, and they took it as a draw offside situation. What can you do? Um, but then I saw Kyle come in and really do well. You know, he he managed the run. You know, the first run that we had, um, and they were offsides again on that play. And then um, and then the following, you know, just throwing a really good ball to Chris right there, and just like inches, you know, just um, being able to let his feet die and get that ball in the corner for a touchdown, possibly there. So love that Kyle just went in was just calm, he was cool, he had a great look in his eyes. And I felt like if Baker can't go, I love where he I love how he looks right now going forward with the rest of the game plan. Mike's a guy that every team knows he's your go to guy. Yeah. They're gonna to look to, to stop him. He continually finds ways to get over. Are you just amazed this is he's going to his tenth year yeah. uh, with a chance for, you know, ten straight uh, one thousand yard season. What what is it about him that just makes him so difficult to, to slow down? Yeah, it's that gamesmanship, right? And I mean, I think one of the things I've learned about Mike is is in the offseason, getting a chance to kind of spend some time with them in different scenarios outside of the building is he's such a gamer. Like, he, he loves to play whatever it is. He's a competitor. He's like, whether it's cards, whether it's darts, you know, pool, um, shooting around basketball, like he's good. He just kind of finds a way and he's good at everything. So it carries over to the way he plays. He sees leverage. He sees coverage. He's seen it all, and he has an adjustment for whatever they do. And so um, it's great to just have a guy like that that makes, you know, pretty normal play calls look fantastic. I mean, there's, you know, we look at the, the still shot on the sideline, and there wasn't anybody in the picture on his, on his uh, touchdown, the first one, you know. Um, and so love just having him over there and just giving, him, giving us that ability for them. They have to go put extra people out there, and then that opens up other things for us. So Mike continues to amaze me with some of those did things. Did he do anything special to sell? Like they were trying to pass that off, right? Did he, yeah. do, did he run around in a particular way or in such a, a way that, that that would cause problems for them there? Or? That's a great question. I want to keep that kind of in-house a little bit on the adjustment. But, yes, you're, you're, you're right on what, you know, what he's looking at and how he's attacking it. Staying on Mike for a minute, Baker yeah. said that Mike is the best receiver he's ever yeah. You coached a couple of good ones. Yeah. Right. Tyler Lockett, DK. Is Mike the best receiver you've ever had a chance to coach? Yeah, I think this guy's a first ballot Hall of Famer. You know, his career speaks for itself. The way that he's able to find access and get open in any scenario, um, I would have to give it to Mike, you know, and, and I don't want to take anything away from Tyler, Doug Baldwin, 
you know, DK, who are fantastic players, you know. Um, and this is a guy who kind of puts it all together, and he's six foot five with that length. And, and you know, we've seen in games too where he can just flat out run by guys still at this point, you know. So he really does have it all, you know. Um, yeah, hope that answered. Yeah. Yeah, the, his majority of your touchdowns this year, do you need other guys to kind of step up? Yeah. To, to kind of balance things out a little bit more? Absolutely. Like, you know, love, love a couple of those games where, you know, Kate had the two touchdown game and, you know, Rashad's starting to find the end zone in his own ways, you know, and um, would look just, again, like we're talking about it again, but I would love to just get Chris going, you know, and, um, and find the things that he does well, you know, find the right, you know, coverage attacks to put him in the right spots. Like that's something that I'm going to keep battling uh, to do because I just, I love Chris and what he's about, you know, and I really believe in the guy, so. Two games you used Durham more, yeah. made a big play for you. What was the impetus behind that, and what are you expecting to see develop from him? Yeah, so just seeing like huge confidence growth in pain. Um, I think that comes with just his his level of comfortability in the calls. And now it's like you know one of the things we talked about was okay, you know what? That's the play call. Um, you know why because of this coverage or that and then the how the little details of his blocks he did a fantastic job in protection last week and then finishing his routes catching the ball and really giving us another big target for Baker to give him that ball in that situation the guy was in great position but he showed that in college his ability to play big to the ball um, and I think the, the the side story too is like with this confidence in him knowing what he's doing, like his personality, he really is a fun guy to be around. And we're seeing a lot more of that in the last couple of weeks out of him. So um, it's just I really do expect him to give us a better pass attack when we're in 12 personnel um, to give us a little more variety where we can stay out there and do some things. What did you think of his catch? Because that could have been a pick. Oh, I know. That's what I'm saying. It was, that was incredible, you know, to take it off his head and was hoping for one step more he can get in, you know, but we ended up finding a way to score there. But yeah, fantastic effort play right there. And Baker showing trust that he could make this throw if I throw it out there. Rashad White was a 100 yard rusher in Indianapolis. Yeah. And, uh, you know, getting him into space ended up being a huge thing, as it has been uh, for the whole season. So, yeah. do you uh, think, looking at that and going forward, that this is going to be you know, a continuing upward trend with the run game and how it's been improving? I certainly hope so. You know, we're always, we're always hoping for those big games to control it from the run game. It opens up a lot more things for us in the play actions and some of the screens and and uh, things that we do there. Um, but I think it's a testament to a, a, a couple of things. You know, First of all, talk about the offensive line and how well they've been playing together, um, particularly in the run game for about a month now. You know, I know we haven't had the big, the big yardage that you would love to see, but um, it all starts with them. It starts with Hainsey getting us directed the right way, which he's doing a great job. And then just like seeing Cody's growth, you know, especially over the last couple of weeks. And, um, and Stinney, of course, doing a great job. So, so that group really, and then Rashad trusting what's happening up front, I thought it was his just best disciplined run game that he had um, of the year in terms of just pressing the runs the right way to force the defense into those combo blocks. And that's where we're seeing that all come together. Um, and now the pass game, we were just a little bit sloppy last week, and that's the part that really needs to come together for us as well to be able to finish these drives get us into field goal range and some of those things. And we're really um, continuing to try to detail out some of those things, spending a little extra time during walkthroughs and practice um, to just get the landmarks perfect, perfectly where we want them um, as we go forward here. You mentioned Cody's growth. Um, might have been his best game so far right on Sunday. Yeah. Oh, in what area specifically has he taken the biggest step forward? Is it just you know, not being as inconsistent or is it just Hand placement technique? Yes, hand placement and footwork. It always starts there, right? So what are my feet? What's, what's the call? What type of run is it? What's my first step? What's my second step? And then can I keep my hands tight and target my hand and my, and my helmet the right way? And that's where his discipline is really growing um, for the last two weeks now because he really had a fantastic game against the Niners against another really good player. You know, so here we go. We throw him right at, you know, um, at Armstead two weeks ago, then Buckner, his twin, right? Remember, they had the, both of those guys. We played them in Seattle for a couple years, but really holding his own there. Um, and it all started with this technique and his pad level. Um, so I, I love where he's headed, you know, and that's the that's the guy that we were hoping for and why we just said, you know, he's struggling, but we're going to stay with him. We're going to stay behind him and continue to just pour in and develop, you know, as we keep that mentality for our whole group. Coach, take me through your thought process during the game. Yeah. If something works early. Yeah. Do you kind of mark it and say we can go back to it? And yeah. if something doesn't work, 
do you just line it out? Yeah, and, and then the hard part for me as a play caller is the ones that work, those are easy, right? Circle that one. Okay, let's get back to that. Great conversations with, with Goody and Joe happening with the run game. Then I got all the pass guys, you know, giving me their thoughts for their areas. So there's good talk going. The hardest one is when something doesn't work, it's if we look at it and say, why didn't it work? Well, it was a, is it a scheme thing where they got us on this play, let's get away from it? Or is it, no, we just missed this block or, you know, he just didn't press it right. And that's where for me, I got to go, okay, what do you think guys? And they, they got to talk me out of going away from it and say, hey, come back to this. It still looks good. We got it fixed. And then I go, okay, so let's, let's keep it alive for a little while there. You're in a tough business. You've been in this business yeah. a long time. And when you lose six out of seven, there's a lot of noise. I know you guys are week yeah. to week in the tunnel. Your family's not. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and you live in a community, and yeah. you know, there's always going to be dissatisfaction. So when you get to this point where it's like, wow, they have to win this week, or wow, yeah. you know, this guy could get fired. Like, how do you process that? How do you let your family process that? Like, what's yeah. that like for for a coach when you know, it's just not going the way you hoped it would at this point? Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a great question because this is the first time where really, you know, my my wife and my kids, you know, they go to school and they got a bunch of friends who watch Bucks football, they're Bucks fans, you know, and um, and whether it's the sport teams or whatever. And usually people are pretty gracious, but kids can be brutal. Um, so we're we're learning about that. And then we really just take an honest approach to it, you know, and um, like my daughter, she's 13, but she really she really knows football pretty well. And she knows when we're playing good or not. And. Um, so we've had these honest conversations and also just like as we watch other teams play and they're struggling, you know, and somebody wants to be critical, you just got to be like, hey, well, let's not throw a rock in this glass house of ours here, okay? Let's, this is a team that's trying really hard. There's a group of coaches who are working their tails off, these players. They're putting their bodies out there on the line. So let's appreciate that because we're in that similar situation. So we just try to be honest about that with our players and not try to sugarcoat anything and he's like dad this boy this boy said you suck you know at school and I was like sometimes sometimes not though that feel like you know there's some good calls in there too you know hopefully he's not just looking at all the bad ones but um but being able to be light about it I think is important um but yeah thanks for asking that you know because that definitely is something that is new for us to handle you know how's how's Todd Bowles doing How, how's he doing during this this rough stretch same guy and that's one of the things I think we talked about what I'm grateful for, same guy. He attacks the things we need to work on. He focuses on the basics, the fundamental parts of it. And then he recognizes that these guys are playing really hard. There's no quit in our team. They're going for it. There's just things that need to be shored up and fixed. Well, let's just address it. Let's just attack it head on. And then he just kind of stays really steady with us. And, um, and that's what I appreciate about working for him. You know, He's just been so steady through this whole thing. Carolina team has changed uh, coaches uh, this yeah. week. Do you have to kind of go in with the, you know, a look that, hey, we're going to see a lot something different than, that they've shown for, for 11 weeks prior? I, d I don't think I do. Just uh, uh, Jero Evero, you know, he's a, he's a coach that I've coached against, you know, for a bunch of years when he was in San Fran, then he was in L.A. Um, he was the D coordinator in Denver. We played them first game last year. Um, and he's got a really good system. And this is a good defense, you know, and I think that it's the longer they're out there, the more teams are able to to find things against them and wear them down. But um, I see a really good front. I see a great system, especially like when you look at third down, some of the things he does to put guys in position, it makes it really hard on an offense. And so um, I don't I don't think I would I would imagine he would do much different based on I think he believes in in the system of what they're doing. And, and uh, yeah, so hopefully that answers that. Mentioned uh, getting Chris Godwin going. Yeah. Um, he's had a track record of success. Yeah. He hasn't really had that high end production this yeah. year. What ways do you get him more involved? Could that be maybe getting him in like the slot position more? Well, I think if you look at our film, he's in the slot a lot. You know, so even though he's technically the Z receiver, you know, we have ways in our in our different one by three, two by two builds where we are getting him in the slot on some opportunities. Um, and you know, I'm just. I'm just betting on the guy, you know, I'm betting on how he's how he's wired and made up and the way he works every day, that he's going to find his way to continue to work through the things. And then also that Baker is going to continue to learn how to throw to this particular player, you know. Um, but I think, you know, I've said it up here a lot of times, but it's, you know, we start the pass game with Mike and Chris, you know, and so uh, continue to build those things that way. And um, hopefully the coverages that we're getting allow the ball to find him a little bit more.
Anything else? Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah. Did you get your pumpkin cheesecake? I did. Yeah. It's, uh...